for the week of November 21st. This is Mojo Weekly. I'm John. It's time for revenge. Let's attack aggressively. It's Jash. And here's your news, boy. All right, so uh, Microsoft celebrated its 20th anniversary of Xbox by making 76 more games uh, backward compatible onto current Xbox consoles. Uh, these games will support auto HDR on the Series X and will get a resolution increase on that and the Xbox One. So that's awesome. I, I'm digging Microsoft's uh, whole backward compat- compatibility push. Um, Phil Spencer actually came out this week and said, you know, the industry should be more accepting of emulation and and backwards compatibility and stuff. I'm like, preach on, brother man. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you know, uh, and because, you know, emulation, it's just these games, like, they're games that you'll never be able to play again unless you emulate them. You know, what else are you supposed to do, right? It's true. But anyway, uh, so let's go through this game list. I'm not obviously going to read all 76 games, but... Let's pick out some highlights here. We got 50 Cent, Blood on the Sand, which I know people in our chat room are super pumped about. Um, Wow. Let's see. Going down, uh, Beautiful Katamari, which is kind of one of the lesser in the series. I got a few Dead or Alive games. Uh, Disney's Chicken Little, which uh, I don't know if it's you, but people have told me that it is like an awesome... uh, uh, No, I'm thinking Chicken Run. Chicken Run. Never mind. Chicken Run. They're telling these people have told me that it's an awesome like uh, Metal Gear Solid style game, but with cartoony characters. Uh, let's sounds see, amazing. Uh, is is Mel Gibson in it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I certainly hope uh, so. Uh, Fear one, two, and three. Uh, Gun Valkyrie, which I'm pretty sure you're excited about. Hell yes, I am. Hell yes, I am. Matter of fact, on my stream a couple weeks ago when I was playing Anthem, which is not mm-hmm. dead yet, but it's pretty close. Anthem yeah. has a lot in common with Gun Valkyrie. Got to play them both. They're both fun. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, where was I? Uh, Manhunt or Max Payne. Sorry, Max Payne 1, 2, and 3. Uh, mm. The original Nier, which has already been redone and remade. And actually, I've got a copy of it on the way to my house because, boy, it's on sale for a good price right now. Nice. Um, Onichenbara Bikini Samurai Squad. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, these are these are the ones that I'm actually excited about. Uh, Otogi one and two. Um, these are from software games, and I played the original Otogi, and I really enjoyed it, but I never played the second <clears> one. <throat> uh, Red Dead Revolver. So there's that. Sure. Um, Skate two, a bunch of Star Wars games, Time Splitters hmm. two, and Future Perfect. I did uh, hear about Viva- that. That's actually really exciting. <clears throat> and Viva Pinata Party Animals. So yeah, those uh, those Time Splitters games, um, amazing split screen multiplayer um, at game conventions. It's like you got to have Halo, you got to have GoldenEye, and then for me, I got to bring the Time Splitters games. And it's like, do load them all up as many as you can with four controllers, and people f- will fucking sit there for twelve hour days <laughs> yeah. playing the nonstop. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And again, kudos to Microsoft for keeping up this backward compatibility stuff. I, I really dig that. Wish that uh, you know, Sony at the very least would be uh, you know more into that. <clears throat> it's, but, it's you can you can tell when a console wars are happening. You can yeah. tell who is in third place every time because shit like <laughs> yeah. this is happening. When the yeah. GameCube was behind and, and the Wii first came out, we were getting everything we could ever imagine until Nintendo was on top. And then it was like, yeah, fuck you guys. You wait, wait your asses in the seat. You're going to sit in the corner and wait for a new Mario game. Now we're in, we're in the lead. Screw you guys. Yeah. Same thing with PlayStation three, man. The PS three was amazing. It's like, you want to install Linux on your PS three? Go ahead. We don't <laughs> care. Do whatever you want. And we're like, wow, we, this is amazing. And then Sony pulls ahead and they're like, yeah, fuck your Linux. Yeah. Um, next up, the Game Awards. They've announced their nominees for 2021. Uh, Game Awards, I believe, is December 9th. Uh, so, Josh, I'm going to go through. I'm not going to go through all the categories. In fact, I'm only going to go through the Game of the Year uh, category. Um, and then I'm going to ask you for your choice, knowing that you've played exactly one of these. None of them. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Is East no, Nine one of them? <laughs> I'm pretty. Wait, actually, you. I, I think you're right. I think you played none of them. Now that I think about it, uh, so well, let's Death well, maybe. Death Loop Death Loops on there, um, also on sale this week, uh, like half price. It's crazy, isn't it? A uh, brand new game. Just came out like two months ago. Jesus. Um, 
It Takes Two, which is a fun multiplayer game. I, I have played that. That's a very good game. Yeah, it's I don't game. know. I'd give it game of the year, but um, it's, it's a slow a year game. <clears throat> and and man, do I man do I hate the characters in that game. They are just obnoxious pricks. And I hope I haven't gotten to the end of it, but I hope their daughter not only like just. Uh, leaves but also kills them on her way out the door um anyway uh metroid dread is on there that's the one that i thought you played but then i remembered no you didn't get to that one uh psychonauts 2 which is my choice for game of the year i've heard very good things yeah uh ratchet and clank rift apart which is again probably the best ratchet and clank game i've ever played but still just a really highly polished Ratchet and Clank game. I can't really give it game of the year. Mm. Uh, and then finally, Resident Evil Village, which combined bits and pieces of like all the best Resident Evil games. But the sum was not greater than its parts, in my opinion. Hmm. It was a really good game. So I've played all of those except for Death Deathloop. Uh, and I'm, I'm giving it to uh, Psychonauts 2. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, I've heard excellent things about Psychonauts 2. And that uh, actually one of our listeners, our, our good friend, Tony Majors, he uh, was surprised that I had not played the first one. So now I've got to get out there and try the first one. Mm, I'd say skip the first one. Wow. Wow. I mean, it's cool. It's a fun game. A little janky. Hasn't aged well. And at the beginning of part two, they give you the whole story. They, they break it down. <clears throat> man. So would you say on the scale of like Blinks the Time Sweeper Part 1 and Blinks the Time Sweeper Part 2, is it more in the middle somewhere? <laughs> it's better than Blinks. It's better than Blinks. I just don't know. Oh! I don't know wow. that I could go back and uh, and play it these days. It's, it's, it's a little janky. All right. So that's that. Uh, next up, so the latest issue of Weekly Famitsu features an interview with Ryoga Gotoku, studio director uh, Yokoyama. Uh, and so these guys are the creators of the Guza series. And they, he just gave out a few little tidbits and, and the, you know, distilled, uh, is that Yakuza 8 is in development, which is no big surprise. Of course. Uh, they're also working on another sequel to, uh, Judgment. Also not a huge surprise. Sure. But the, but the biggest, uh, little, uh, tidbit is that they are creating a new title in a new, like a new IP, new property. Mm-hmm. So... Um, they're branching out a little bit from the Yakuza series. Now, it could just be like a spinoff of Yakuza that takes place in the same world and who the hell knows. But nevertheless, I'm interested in seeing something new from these guys. Maybe they could, uh, you know, head on over to Sega and say, let's let's fix some of your other IPs. Like, say, <coughs> Shenmue 4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, fuck, dude, I don't know that I can get through a Shenmue game ever again. Wow. Um, I, I was super pumped for three mm-hmm. and uh, because I hadn't played Shenmue since back in the Dreamcast days. Right. Right. And so I had those rose tinted glasses on. Right. Sure. And, of course. And and uh, so I backed the Kickstarter. I was all jacked. And then. Oh, yeah. They, re- they re-released one and two on PS4. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to replay these. And by the time I got through them, I hated Shenmue so much that I still <laughs> haven't even I haven't even cracked the plastic on three. It's hilarious because I did similar. I did not get the one and two uh, HD remakes or anything like that, but I have this big collect collector's edition of signed uh, art books and posters and a t-shirt and a whole bunch of other things and a steel book Shenmue three that I have yet to open. It's like one of those, uh, the game came out and like every review was like, do not touch this. It will ruin your, your nostalgia will be shot. You will be so disappointed. It it's like, the Shenmue 1 game was this big, Shenmue 2 was this big, and Shenmue 3 is like the tiniest of slivers. It's like yeah. almost pointless. I'm like, hmm, yeah. I'll, I'll just leave it in this package and see if it goes up in value eventually, but it's not. No. <laughs> um, Nobody cares. All right. And then uh, finally, wait, actually, no, I've got a couple more stories. Uh, this one was came out of nowhere. Nintendo released version 2.0 update for Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Uh, oh. And I believe they did this, I think, just in time for the holiday season, right? Uh, sure. Giving people a little incentive to go out and buy this. Because the deal with um, uh, Mario Kart uh, Live is that if you wanted to play two players, not only did you need two different carts, which makes sense, but you also needed two different switches, right? Sure. Uh, that's not the case anymore. You can now do split screen, race your carts around. Um, oh. and, and they also added... Uh, I believe, hmm. um, uh, what's it called? Relay mode, 
so you can pass it off to other people in the middle of a race, I guess. So that's kind of neat. Um, they also added uh, Luigi Cup, which is a whole new series of races hmm. um, and, you know, a bunch of other shit. So I like that they're adding to this. And again, neat. the timing's right. You know, so if yeah, people yeah, are totally. Like, uh, I don't know if I want to get it now. They might be more apt to pick these up. Plus, yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe these games are on sale, and I think I saw a cart for like a cart package for like sixty bucks, which is way better than the hundred bucks that it was. Exactly. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I noticed that they've been sitting at, at game shop, game stores like Targets and WalMarts and stuff, and I keep seeing them there for around 70, 60, 70 bucks. I'm like, huh, might be worth grabbing for a kid for the holiday. It's a fun, it's a fun game, man. You just need like some, some hard floors to play it on, you know? Um, yep. uh, last time we did it, we brought it to the cabin and we, uh, uh, you know, uh, pulled the car out of the garage and, you know, nice. raced, it, raced him around the garage and that was awesome. Um, super cool. So yeah. <clears throat> uh, and then and now finally, uh, the switch version of Dodonpachi resurrection will launch on the Nintendo eShop on november 25th so thanksgiving apparently uh nice. for 20 bucks so uh there are eight modes for all dodon pachi fans regardless of skill level there's a mo novice mode for beginners and an arranged mode uh prepared exclusively for the home version uh i don't know a bunch of other stuff <laughs> a battlefield with a <laughs> sense of uh, you know it's all marketing speak i don't i hate reading pr crap yeah um, right you can do simultaneous recording of black label uh, and a screen setting option that can uh, be enjoyed in vertical or Tate mode. So, Tate. Don't you dare say Tate. Tate. Mode. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So on Thanksgiving, we get a new, uh, a new shoot 'em up, huh? Yeah, man. Uh, Very cool. I love it. They, they, these ports have been great on switch so far with uh, Mushima Sama and I forget what other one was it. Espaluda. I think it was Espaluda. That yep. Was I think I grabbed Espaluda. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. That's cool for Thanksgiving day. Then that's an awesome, awesome little Thanksgiving holiday pre pre Christmas treat. Speaking of a pre Christmas sure. treat, the Thanksgiving Eve, you could watch the uh, great movie, uh, eight bit Christmas on HBO max. Are you going to, are you going to check that out? Uh, I feel like I've heard of this. Oh, it looks uh, amazing. I think the trailer looks so eighties cheese. I cannot freaking wait for it. It's going to be fantastic. Right. I'll check it out uh, in next the Wednesday. Neil Patrick Harris, man. All about getting an <laughs> NES in 1988. All right, Doogie. Uh, in the meantime, it's time for our news. Man, you can tell it is a holiday week uh, mm. because there is next to nothing coming out next week. Uh, we, got two, <laughs> we got two games. Uh, really? The first one. For Black yeah, Friday week? Yeah, man. It's a holiday week, you know? Uh, so the first one is, this one's your pick of the week. This is Farming Simulator 2022. <laughs> yeah. I'm on. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. And that, that's coming out for everything, including Stadia. So of yeah, course that. it is. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one, people are excited about this. Apparently it was a PC hit, um, but I, I, I've watched footage of this and I, have, I don't get it. I don't understand the appeal, but I'm dumb and old. Uh, Death's Door coming to the PlayStations and the Switch. All right. That's it, that's it man. You know. And then uh, if you want to find out more stuff that's coming this week, uh, Dale is up next with his retro recap. That is the wrong sound bite, and here's the right one. <laughs> hey, hey, Mojo Weekly listeners, this is Dale, and welcome back to this week's <clears throat> recap of the latest retro re releases, remasters, and remakes. As always, credit for this goes to GSK from Retronauts.com and LimitedRunGames.com. Let's get to it. Hitting physical this week. We have a bunch of Star Wars games. It's Star Wars Jedi Knight Collection, featuring Jedi Knight 1 and 2 for the Switch for $30 via most retailers, and also Star Wars Racer and Star Wars Star Wars Republic Commando, another two-pack combo for the Switch, also for $30 via most retailers. This is a collection of the PS2 era, Xbox era Star Wars games that hit Switch digitally in 2019 for $20 each, and they're now available together a little cheaper for $30 each. Next up for physical, we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl 
for the Switch for $60 each via most retailers. And these are all new 3D remakes of the landmark entries that debuted on the DS in 2006. And I'm not a Polka kid, I, I just missed that window by a couple years, but I do recall the DS game being a huge hit with co-workers at the time, as I think this was the game that included the Pokedometer? to level up your Pokemon, and they were carrying it around with them everywhere. Looking at the trailer for this, uh, re for these remakes, the Pokedometer looks like it's now actually included in games, so you don't have to carry that thing around with you anymore. You know, I cannot say positively though, for a matter of fact, because, you know, unless it's Pokemon Pinball or Picross or Detective Pikachu, my knowledge for core entry Pokemons is null and void. But, uh, there's another Star Wars game, Knights of the Old Republic for the PC and Switch via a one month open pre-order limited run games with editions going for $35, $90, and $175. And this is the Switch Digital release last week, which is a port of the mobile game that was a port of the original 2003 Xbox and PC game and not the upcoming remake. Limited Run is hooking you up though with their trademark collectibles and their pricier editions will be adding in coins, pins, fancy USB drives, and a physical version of the in-game card game Pazak. And the, this time the last physical release for this week is a uh, authorized reissue of the Sega Genesis Mega Drive Horizontal Shmup Gairis for $55 via one month open pre-order from uh, Retrobit. It's also this week's background music selection and now Gairis has a pretty rad trailer showing off its intriguing boss fights and cutscenes but GSK from Retronauts writes it off as overhyped. Its collector's edition is going for $55 and contains a radically kitschy collectibles like a vintage t-shirt, poster, and an interview booklet. Moving on to digital releases, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl will be hitting digitally this week as well on the eShop on Switch for $60. For the Arcade Archives release this week, we have R Ray Maze, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and that's for the PS4 and Switch for $8, and it is a Pac-Man-esque maze game that first hit arcades in 1988 from Taito. Multiple endings and a surprise focus on a narrative highlight this maze game. The G-Mode archives this week is Dodonpachi Daiju DX for PC via Steam for $5, and this is the third entry from the acclaimed uh, Dodonpachi Shmup series. And like other G-Mode Archives release, it is a port of a mid-2000s mobile Japanese title. Darius Cosmic Collection Arcade is now available on the PC via Steam for $45, with the first week sale going on right now for $36. And if you missed out on the PS4 shmup collection of this series last year, it collects seven versions of four Darius games, uh, Darius 86, Darius 2, Sagaya and Darius Gaiden and comes ported over from M2 which means it is packed with their trademark emulation goodies like gadgets, quick save and load, multi-monitor support, and so much more. The two Blood, Blood Rain revamped titles that went up for physical pre-order on limited run games a few weeks ago are now available digitally this week on PS4, Switch, and Xbox One for $20 each. They are remasters of the two games that first hit PS2 and Xbox. And if you're looking for some skeevy Mahjong games, then Publisher City Connection will be able to hook you up this week in the Japan Switch eShop with the re release of Idol Mahjong Final Romance R for 2,490 yen. And wrapping up this week, there, if you didn't see the Xbox 20th anniversary video celebration press conference, what have you, it, one of the big uh, highlights from it was the announcement of one official final for real final update to backwards compatibility with over 70 titles, I believe it was 73 or 74 uh, original Xbox and Xbox 360 games that now work on the Xbox One and Series S and X. If you're playing on Xbox One X and Series S and X, expect performance upgrades for HDR and resolution upticks. Uh, there are some curiosities on this list for sure, not everyone's a winner, but there's also a lot of gems with well, highlights for me personally being 50 Cent Blood on the Sand, Bankshot Billiards 2, Dead or Alive Ultimate 3 and 4, all four entries of the Fear franchise, Manhunt, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, the Mortal Kombat reboot game from 2009, Time Pilot, Time Splitters 2, and Time Splitters Future Perfect. 
you can visit xbox.com also and get a complete list or if you check the mojo man's show notes i got a picture of all 70 games listed there as well so yeah go check out the mojo menace.com forums for this week's listing and you'll find a picture of all those 70 plus new backwards compatibility games and i'll turn it back over to john and jash So I kind of feel like we need if we're if we're doing video of this stuff and people are watching on YouTube and they have to sit for six minutes and listen to Dale while you and I are sitting there going. Yep, yep. <laughs> we should probably start providing some visual cues, you know, like, I don't know. Take your top off, Josh. <laughs> Woo! Off it comes, baby. Hey, I did my Digimon is greater than Pokemon sign. I did like that. I like the effort. <clears throat> Maybe I'll, I'll try to find some cue cards. Um, so it's time for the game spotlight. And Josh, you wanted to talk about Contra today. Yeah, man. I mean, it's crazy that we haven't talked about Contra, but I mean, in the world of Contra, have we really had any new big splashes in the world of, of Konami's amazing run and gun shoot em up series in the last 10 years? Uh, Not really, but had like... That, we've had that piece of shit dream, uh, Switch game a couple of years ago. Yeah, I know. What would be your favorite Contra game in the whole entire Contra series? Oof. Um, Do you I like Contra? Really, I love Contra. I suck okay. at Contra. I've, I've never finished a Contra game without the code. Um, oh, okay. Uh, but uh, I would have to say Shattered Soldier on the PS2. Um, For real? I <clears throat> fucking love that game. Oh, uh, interesting. It is, it is so hardcore. It and is. That's a and that's a game that in uh, multiplayer, two-player, I got very close to beating a number of times. Interesting. But God damn, it just kicked my balls. Um, love that game. Wow. What about you? I So I actually didn't care so much for Shattered Soldier. I liked... Okay, so obviously, when we had the 8-bit and 16-bit era Contra games, that was the best. You know, like, Contra is amazing. The Alien War is amazing. Contra Force... Or sorry, Contra Force sucked. Uh, Hardcore on the Genesis was amazing. Um, and then we got nothing during the 32-bit, 64-bit era. It was like what there was the legacy of war and the Contra adventure yeah. or something like that. Like, yeah, I remember I got, my, I got my Saturn and I was so excited to see a new Contra game for it. So I bought legacy of war and was like, Oh my God, like, wow, this is such a shit series. Um, now yeah. like they've completely ruined it. Um, and shattered soldier was the writing of the ship. It was like more or less that same style, the 2.5 D and whatever. And then the music was really good. And it did a lot of homage, uh, you know, paying back uh, some some tributes to the original um, 8 and 16 bit games. Um, but I actually yeah. enjoyed Neo Contra a little more. That was the one that came out like two years later. I thought that was pretty good. And then uh, Contra 4 on the DS was actually a really good game. Um, yeah. But yeah, one I that like I would Neo say. Neo Contra a lot too. Neo Contra, I really enjoyed. Yeah, I thought Neo Contra was a little bit better. I, I don't know. I, I, like Sh I like Shattered Soldier a lot. Don't get me wrong. But I yeah. thought Neo Contra was a little bit better. But man, um, if it wasn't the 16 bit and 8 bit Contra games, you have got to play Contra Rebirth on the Wii. I oh, yeah, that one's great. fucking love that game. I think it is so fun. It is so classic. It's it's like it's like uh, someone went into like 1989, found an arcade cabinet, and said, "Wait a second, you guys never released it." And they're like, "Yeah, we made this amazing Contra game. It's like you know, it uses a lot of the same sprites and engines from like the 16-bit era ones." But we were like, "Nah, forget it. We canceled it." And it's like, "Whoa, the world needs to see this." Just like that Castlevania Adventure Rebirth. This Contra Rebirth is fantastic. Um, I really love the game. I think it pays homage to like shit, like everything from the original 80s. It's so over the top and so fun and so crazy. Um, the graphics and everything have that old uh, late 80s, early 90s arcade feel to it. The soundtrack has kind of got that Genesis arcade twang to it or that whatever you want, not twang, but you know that like tinny sound to it. Yeah, the, oh, the tinny sound. The tinny sound. I, I absolutely love it. Um, but that would that would be it. Like those are my top three. It's like Contra, Alien Wars, and Contra Rebirth would be my favorite three of the series. And I think you know if you if you played one, you've played them all. I prefer Contra to the Metal Slug games. Like I like Metal Slug. I enjoy the games a lot, but I think Contra, especially Alien Wars, with how the game played and how it was it was like uh, 
it was like so new and it brought something new to the run and gun fran the, the the genre itself whereas metal slug was like it's kind of like contra you'll like if you like contra you'll like metal slug it's like contra was like nothing before it you know um but dude have you ever heard of this hardcore uprising game that came out for the playstation 3 and the 360 uh, yeah yep I never played yeah. it, but it, and it doesn't have the Contra name on it, but a lot of people really, really like it. Um, it's almost like it's a sequel or a prequel to the hardcore game that came on the Genesis, but I've, yeah. I've no experience with it. I've never played it before, but I've always heard really good things about it. Is it one of those things that's just now in the air, like it's vaporware, like you can't find it anywhere? I'm not sure. I'll look it up But uh, while, while you're talking, but there's another game that came out recently um, uh, on Game I know there's Pass. Well, Rogue Core, oh, Rogue Corpse, That's, or something like that. Yeah, I think that might be it. I think that might be it. Um, and it was really good, like really good. Um, oh, really? I, I'm pretty sure it's on Game Pass too. Um, awesome. Yeah, there was one that was released uh, in September of 2019. It's a uh, consider. It's it's a uh, uh, isometric view, run and gun, and it supposedly takes place years after Contra Three: The Alien Wars. So it must be like a technical sequel for it. But it was published by Konami, made by Toy Logic. So it's a uh, two-year-old game now uh i'd love to yeah. check that one out it's on everything you know switch ps4 xbox one and stuff like that so yeah that sounds sounds right up my alley but yeah they need the konami this is this is the crime of konami is there's these three games that they came out with that were exclusive to we that 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 yeah, uh the rebirth that hard yeah. or the, i'm sorry the 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 re rebirth, those rebirth, contra rebirth, gradius rebirth, and then the adventure rebirth. Those games they need to come out with on the Switch and a phys like like literally limited run games. This is this should be a, it's a fucking slam dunk. Get that three pack or add it to some kind of a collection thing. If Konami does another like Castlevania collection of some sorts, um, yeah, it, it's a crime that the, that these games aren't included in more things because you know who who had WiiWare like like people were buying WiiWare for the the crystal chronicles life of a life as a king or the pokemon parade march games like they weren't buying <laughs> castlevania and contra games i was yeah yeah, but, yeah. so was that but, yeah yeah was, yeah it, totally it, man the contra series is so weird because it is it does have some of the best running run, running gun games ever created but it also has some of the biggest shit balls in the history of all time <laughs> on top of like yeah. some uh what what contra returns the pachinko game contra 3d another pachinko game like yeah <sighs> Konami, Jesus, really? Konami, <laughs> Konami. But yeah, I mean, everybody's played Konami. I'm just curious, you know. And you can you can reach out to us on Twitter or on the forums or whatever. What is your favorite Contra game? Because I I'm interested. I, I like was really shocked to hear Shattered Soldier from you. Um, yeah. But I would say the Alien Wars would be my favorite, and that's the Super Nintendo version, not the Game Boy one, not the GBA one. Both mm -hmm. good games, but that Super Nintendo, the original Contra Three Man, just blew my fucking mind. Right on, man. Love me some Contra. And it is mm -hmm. time for the for the last question. Oh, my. All right. So that's uh, that leads me to, I mean, it's, it's easy. What's uh, outside of Contra? What is the next best run and gun series? Or even I, run and gun game? Just one game? Or series, however you want to handle it. <clears throat> well, I guess if you're considering series, um, one that would be as as good or held up as highly as as contra would be metal slug there's your easier mm -hmm. there's an easy answer but there is one running gun game that is better than all metal slug and better than all contra games oh really yes there is and that is called one gunstar heroes on the sega genesis <laughs> which is good, fucking fabulous good, good call good call fabulous good call. like it's my favorite i, I it's my yeah. favorite genesis game it's my favorite running running gun game ever made it's pfft. <laughs> they they try that gunstar superheroes that they came out with on the game boy advanced yeah it was it was it was fine it was okay but man they'll nobody will ever top gunstar heroes no mm -hmm. so good man great answers mm -hmm. and i agree with i agree with both so we'll end it there with that uh if you want to find more of our stuff you can go to mojo guess what josh oh my god i got i got links to the discord chat on the main page now how about that? <gasps> what? This yeah, is mind-blowing. You don't even have to go to the forums anymore. So go to mojomenace.com. And on that main page, you'll find links to the forums. You'll find links to a link to the Discord chat. You'll find a link to our merch store, for God's sakes, where you can buy crap. What? 
And uh, mm. every, a little bit of everything you buy goes to fund all this nonsense that we do. So, you know, think about it. Uh, YouTube, Twitch, all the social medias. You find us at Mojo Menace. Josh, where can they find you? You can find me playing Chrome Hounds on my PlayStation 5. That's where you can find me. That's another good one. That's another good one. Check out Chrome Hounds. That's pretty fun. Right. It's 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 basically a, an, an homage to all the Contra games. But seriously, uh, that might that might be the one that I'm thinking of. Chrome Hounds. It's pretty Chrome good. Hounds. It's pretty yeah. good. Um, honestly, it's it's like one of those like, hey, fuck it. If Konami's not going to do it, we'll do it. You know, um, I picked it up. It was like on sale for like ten bucks. Are, or are something. you sure it's Are you sure it's Chrome Hounds? Chrome Hounds is a, a mech game for Xbox 360 that Mo is in love with. It's what? Chrome something. Yeah, it's Chrome. Something. Blazing Chrome. Blazing Chrome. That's Blazing the one Chrome? I was thinking of. Okay. Yep. Something. I don't know. Blazing Chrome. There's it's blood and chrome. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, Jesus. Yeah. Sorry, not Chrome Hounds. Blazing it's, Chrome. Yeah, it's Blazing Chrome. If I can anyway. remember the name. Anyway, yeah, you 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 can you can guys just find me. I'm Joshua Turbo. Uh, I'm either on Twitter or I'm on Twitch most nights. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at underscore Joshua Turbo. Don't forget the underscores. It is the most important underscore in all the internet. And that's it for us. We will talk to you after we gorge ourselves on turkey next week. Oh, yeah. Peace. Bye-bye. Bye.